Hi, my name is Gary and welcome to the channel. The video you're about to watch is one that I moved from my old YouTube channel onto its new permanent home on this YouTube channel. If you have any questions about the content that you're about to watch, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and if you like the content, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Both of those things really help support the channel and give me the ability to continue to produce more content for you. So without further ado, on to the video. Okay, it seems like uh, several people have been asking for this update, so I wanted to just show what's kind of changed in the setup and uh, where things currently stand right now. So I'll probably call this video uh, 1.5, um, and then the next video will probably show uh, the generators being hooked up. But starting off here, this is the newer version of the Ames inverter. My last one uh, was damaged in shipping, and it was having a problem during the 20 second interval where the internal transfer switch would switch from uh, the battery power back to utility power. It had some voltage fluctuation. Uh, during the output, but it was damaged in shipping, so Ames covered it, and now I have the new version. So the new version comes with this uh, external display. I'll turn it on here. Uh, the display pretty much says the last thing, just input voltage, output voltage, what the battery bank's currently doing. Uh, I created this little box and just uh, put it in here for, uh, keep it kind of covered because uh, this display actually doesn't have a back on it, uh, which is one of the biggest complaints about it, but seems to work otherwise. Uh, you can kind of see here, I've, I've redone some of the wiring. Uh, I still have the output voltage uh, displayed here and the input for the generator. Uh, this goes into um, a basically cutoff switch, and then here's an automatic transfer switch. Uh, just kind of uh, switches between the generator power and utility power and then all that is then fed into the inverter. Uh, you can see the cables that I have coming off of the inverter. They go into this 250 amp uh, circuit breaker which I have a DC circuit breaker on both the positive and the negative and uh, I just wanted to do that as a precaution just in case anything went wrong that I was ensured that the, the system would trip and it also gives me basically a safe cutoff point for um, when I'm actually, you know, doing some maintenance on, on the system, which is really very rare. Everything is just working as intended at this point. But um, one thing that you'll probably obviously notice that wasn't in the last video is this big black box that's down here. Uh, in the big black box that is where the new battery, battery bank resides. Uh, it's still 48 volts. I just have, um, uh, I now have a total of two individual four battery sets, 12 volts each, uh, hooked in series to get the 48 volts and then the two 48 volt sets are hooked in parallel to raise my, my amp hours up right now. Uh, with this current setup, I was able to do uh, 19 and a half hours before the inverter did an alert and basically said, hey, your batteries are starting to get low, you need to figure something out. So uh, there, there's no doubt in my mind with some adjustments inside the house that I, I could probably, in a real emergency, get this past 24 hours. And, and with the generators that I have, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that before I'd even need to run out and get gas, I could probably get a week out of uh, this system and again this runs everything in my house that's 120 volts so the only thing that I'm not running off of this is air conditioning, uh, the stove and the dryer. Everything else in the entire house runs off this. All the lights, all the fans, everything, the garage door opener, 100% everything. I will say that I'm very efficient in my house so uh, everything is basically uh, LED lights throughout the entire house and you know I've done everything I, I can to kind of uh, cut back on my energy usage. I'll show you the meter that I have here on the battery box. It's just showing the current voltage and then once it starts pulling voltage on the batteries you can see the, the amps and the watt draw on it and you can see that you know I, I run you know cycles on the batteries just to see where they stand up but what I'll do now is I'll kind of cut away and I'll open this box and just show you what I've got set up in there. Okay so now I've opened the battery box and you can see in here that there are a total of eight batteries. They're absorbed glass matte batteries. 
So these batteries do not vent exhaust unless they're overcharged or you know there's some major issue with them. Uh, but currently the only exhaust port is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's in the back here and that's where the battery cables actually run out. So what I've done with my system is I've purchased these grounding bars off of, uh, Amazon. They're about 40 or $50 a piece but I found them uh, to become really useful to make one for my positive and one for my negative and not have to worry about kind of any resistance issues in between the two. So you can see the two banks positives going to this and then in the center there you can see the uh, lead going to the inverter and then the little skinny cable that is there goes to uh, the digital monitor that I showed you what the, the battery voltage was. And then if we come over here, you can see another one for the negative side. And the only difference about this side is that there's a shunt in place. And the shunt uh, hooks into that digital meter that I just showed you. And that basically allows me to monitor the batteries and monitor the load draw that's on this system. It's a 100 amp shunt. It should be enough for this system. With all the load tests that I've run on this system, I've never seen it really pulling uh, anything even close to 100 amps. I don't, I don't even think it's come close to 50 amps. But you can also see down there that there's another DC uh, battery breaker for the negative terminal terminal that uh, sits out here. Um, the reason why I have the positive outside the box and the negative inside the box is the uh, this box actually has a, a lock on it uh, just to keep you know prying eyes out of it and you know just to make sure that I don't have to worry about somebody coming in here and dropping a screwdriver or a hammer or nails on this stuff and and really sending you know a lot of current through themselves and like I said this external one allows me to do maintenance on the system by completely disconnecting uh, the batteries from the system but this is the entire system uh, that sits out in the garage and um, like I said the next video will kind of show you uh, what the system's like with the generators I don't know how well that one will work since I'll have to be running the generators and, and they're kind of loud but um, I'll try to get a video up of that soon. Uh, please leave comments in the, in the uh, bottom below here and just let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, kind of, you know, describe what's going on with my system and what, um, why I made some of the decisions that I've, I've made. All right. Thank you.